today's word is from uh, Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 to 22. Today's word is from Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 to 22. Brother Moon will come out and lead the word for today's worship. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of man, even though every inclination of his heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the, the earth endures, Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Amen. Hello. Hello. It's a Sunday. What kind of week did you have? Fine. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, today we had uh, we have a new face person. Welcome. <laughs> okay. Uh, September has passed by quickly, and. Now autumn has come. I really feel that uh, summer has passed. Over the past few years, uh, spring and fall in Korea have become shorter and shorter. It wasn't long ago that I couldn't sleep because of the heat, hot weather. Uh, and soon the time will come to worry about the heating. Uh, that's why people say, if you want to wear full clothes, pay attention to October. Uh, anyway, uh, it is clear that we as Christians must care and care for the world in a changing climate. But the reality we face now is also the world that God loves, so we shouldn't complain about it. I hope that all of us will seek God's will, but do our best in a given present. I hope that we will be the one who worship today with this heart. Some fantasy movies are based on the story of the only left survivor. Finding themselves alone, they are initially happy to be able to do whatever they want to do, but soon find themselves in sorrow and fear that there is no one else but themselves. The word God built could not be that way, but what would you do when you were left alone in this world? Today's word begins with the story of Noah and his family who are left alone. Seeing the sins of this world, God is determined to judge them all, except for one person, Noah, who God loved. And when the water finally disappeared from the ground after a long period of judgment, all that was left of this world was Noah and his family and animals in the ark he made. There were no living creatures left there. What choice did Noah have when he was left alone? He could have lived as if he were the master of the whole world. 
he could have made his own word as if he were laughing at people who ignored his action. But after all those times, Noah's heart was still facing God. Here is the words of verse 20. The Noah built an altar to the Lord and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed the burnt offerings on it. The first thing Noah did when he got off the ark was to worship God. What was Noah's thinking after spending more than a year on the ark? In a word that only had Noah and God left, how did Noah feel to worship? We can see three meanings in Noah's worship. First of all, it was a worship of reconciliation. We are well aware of the background of the situation in today's world. Human sin was evil enough to bring out God's regret. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth and his heart was filled with pain. So Noah also had remembered that there was a judgment of God's wrath before his offering. Therefore, Noah needed to take back his wrath against the sins of mankind. Uh, the aroma that he sent up the offerings was used as a smoothing aroma. His fragrant smell was one of the means to save people from God's judgment, quenching his anger. Noah, who means comfort in his name, reconciled the relationship between God and human by offering sacrifices to God alone. Uh, in the New Testament, we find you can find the reconciliation sacrifices through the ministry of Jesus Christ on the cross. We offered his body, and he offered his body as a sacrifice to resolve the conflict between God human. And the world, which had no choice but to die from their sin, was saved. Uh, these are the words of chapter 3 in Romans. God presented him as a sacrifice, a uh, atonement. Through faith in his blood, he did this to dis uh, demonstrate his justice. Because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed be uh, beforehand unpunished. So dear members of Hong Kong English Ministry, are we making peace with God through our worship? Isn't our worship just to show our righteousness? I hope we remember, remember, remember that worship is the process of acknowledging our sins and going before God to be forgiven. And next, it was the worship of gratitude. Noah built an altar and raised his gratitude before God. What was his he? to be thankful for. There was no one around him except his family and this world is in complete silence. 
Why did he thank God for having to start everything from nothing? Noah's gratitude was for his thinking of him, nevertheless, for saving him in the flood of judgment, and for all to all of him. And furthermore, Noah's worship was a thankful thing that came from the relief that God's judgment is no longer a check. Although there were only empty words before him, it didn't mean anything to Noah. He was grateful that the moment of judgment, which never seemed to end, passed, and that God saved him in the midst of it. In this gratitude, we learn the heart of Christians who are grateful under any circumstances. How grateful can we be in the situation before us? Even if it is a situation different from what we think, we have to be grateful, to be alive, and to live a full day. Because all these things cannot be done without God's grace. I would like to, uh, we all meditate uh, on the words of Habakkuk, which we read together last week. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls. Uh, yet, I will rejoice in the Lord, I will be joyful in God my Savior. The situation in Habakkuk is so hopeless. It seems that there is nothing more left for him. But he is simply happy and grateful for one thing, one reason. It is the Lord, the God, his Savior. The members of Hong Kong English Ministry, let's Hope that we will be the ones who can be grateful with only one God. I hope that we will all be able to worship in any situation before us. And lastly, it was a worship of mediate. Noah's worship contains the meaning of mediate for all humankind. It is connected with the meaning of reconciliation that we shared earlier. God's judgment was passed, but evil has still not been erased from the world. Therefore, Noah prayed for all the sin by offering a sacrifice to God. This was past, uh, possi possible uh, because Noah was a righteous man. We can find the worship in the same meaning in Job. After all the conversations are over, Job offers a sacrifice to God for the sins of their friends. So now take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pray for you, and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you according to your folly. You have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Through the prayer of Job, God forgave his friends for their sins. And through Noah's sacrifice, God forgave the sins of the earth and took back the judgment against them. Now, 
so many years later. And the world is still full of sins. And it is the Christians and the church where they gather that can mediate for such a world. Dear members of Hong Kong English Ministry, what kind of worship are we offering for this world? Worship just for ourselves is not one that God rejoices in. Jesus, who served as a sacrifice for us, is still mediated for us. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. We also have to follow the path that Jesus Christ has worked and worship of mediation for the world. The worship of reconciliation and gratitude and mediation is a form of worship that the Christian must remember. The Bible says that not only did God rejoice in Noah's worship, but he also declared through it that he would not make any more judgment through the water. And as proof, he made a rainbow and showed it to the world. We look at the rainbow and only think God's judgment, but we should remember that behind it was Noah's worship, which God rejoiced. God made a new history through Noah and his descendants. And Noah became the ancestor of all nations. He blesses those who offer worship that God rejoices in. Worship of reconciliation, gratitude, and mediation. Through today's word, we will have to be those who worship like that. I sincerely hope that we will have a true heart of a worshiper who can resolve a relationship with God, give thanks under all circumstances, and mediate for the sins of this world forever. Amen. Okay, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us and protecting us during our week and giving us your word of gospel. We want our lives to be changed through today's word. Let today's word come to us as a new enlightenment and serve as the foundation for growing into Christians. We learn that the worship we should have are the worship of reconciliation, gratitude, and mediation. We look back to see if these are in our worship. Rather than just a formal worship, let us have a worship to restore the relationship between God and us. Thank for the grace and pray for this word. So we want God to be pleased with our worship and prayers. Please receive them gladly. And thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.